the Tile Roofing Industry Alliance presents the High Velocity Hurricane Zone installation of tile roofs to the new Florida Building Code issued in 2020. Using the new Roofing Application Standard, RAS 127, to the new ASCE 716 standard that's taking effect in Florida on January 1st, 2021. The Tile Roofing Industry Alliance is a coalition of manufacturers, as well as associate importers and other suppliers. In this presentation, we'll discuss responsibility and design and what is defined as high wind, what is the same and different from ASCE 710 to the new ASCE 716 standard, how to make the calculations for tile roofs, how to use the roofing application standard RAS 127 for the high velocity hurricane zone in Florida, and finally we'll work through several examples. As roofing professionals, we have a responsibility to make sure that a roof is designed and installed to meet the code requirements. Here are some examples what can go wrong if they're not installed or designed appropriately. So what is high wind? The International Building Code defines high wind as design wind speeds over 100 miles per hour. The American Society of Civil Engineers determines those wind speeds for every location throughout the United States. Essentially, high wind regions are areas with hurricane force winds, such as Florida, coastal Texas, and Hawaii, or high elevations like the Rocky Mountains of Colorado, or there's unique geographic features such as Reno, Nevada. We'll take a look at what is the same and what is different from the ASCE 710 standard to the new ASCE 716 standard that determine the changes to the high velocity hurricane zone RAS 127. RAS 127 governs the high velocity hurricane zone or HVHZ in Florida, which includes the Miami-Dade and Broward counties. RAS 127 has been revised based on the Florida Building Code adopting ASCE 716 standard for high wind design requirements. We'll go through what's the same and what's changed. The design wind speed remains the same for the high velocity hurricane zone at 175 miles per hour for both Miami-Dade and Broward counties. The calculation methods also remain the same looking up the pressures for each zone based on the mean roof height, then multiplying those pressures for each zone by the aerodynamic multiplier retrieved from the NOA or notice of approval for the tile product, then subtracting the moment due to gravity from the NOA based on the roof slope to calculate the overturning moment for each zone, then comparing the results to the fastening resistance values listed in the tile product NOA to select a fastening method that meets or exceeds the overturning moments that you are calculated. And we'll do some examples shortly. Also, the NOAs or notice of approvals listed by Miami-Dade are the same and are used in the same manner. They do not need to be changed or updated. The manufacturers will update them for any changes uh, regarding their products as they need to. So use the current NOAs listed on Miami-Dade's website for those values that we talked about. In the previous version, there were three zones for all roofs, one, two, and three. One being the middle field portion of the roof, two being the perimeters, and zone three for the corners. And that applied to both gable roofs and hip roofs. With the new ASCE 716 standard and the new updated RAS 127, now there are more zones. They're still numbered one, two, and three, but they're subdivided into whether they're eave or ridge located. So we still have one for the middle field portion of the roof, two E for the perimeter at the eave, two R for the perimeter at the ridge. For gable roofs, we have a two N at the gable end. And then we have a three E for corners for the gable roof and three R for the corners at the ridge on a gable roof. 
and for a hip roof we still have one for the center field and 2e for the eave portion of the perimeter 2r for the ridge portion of the perimeter that runs along the ridge and the hips and zone number three for the corners the slope ranges have also changed in ras 127 in the previous version there were two slope ranges of 6 and 12 and less roof slopes and greater than 612. In the new RAS 127 to the updated ASCE 716 standard, now there are three roof slope zones from 2 and 12 to 4 and 12, greater than 4 and 12 to 6 and 12, and greater than 6 and 12 to 12, 12 roof slopes. Important to the new updated RAS 127 standard are the need to distinguish between hip roofs and gable roofs because they have different values now as compared to the previous edition or version of RAS 127 where it didn't matter which type of roof style. The pressure tables have changed. There used to be two tables for exposures C and D that applied to all roofs. In the new RAS 127, there are 12 tables, depending on the roof style, the exposure, C and D, and the roof slope. So it's important to know which table to use to look up the values. Let's take a look at how to make the calculations with the new RAS 127 standard. First, you need to have all the following information for the building roof and tile. The building width and length, the exposure category, whether it's C or D, the roof style of gable or hip, the roof slope, and the peak and eave heights to calculate the mean roof height, as well as the notice of approval for the specific tile being used. The very last table in RAS 127 has a guide of where to find the information needed. The roof design pressures are found in the tables in RAS 127. The mean roof height, roof slope are from the job site. The aerodynamic multiplier, restoring moment due to gravity, and attachment resistance values are found in the product NOA. Then you calculate the required moment of resistance using that information above. While the ASCE 716 standard has exposure categories B, C, and D, the high velocity hurricane zone using RAS 127 only has exposure C and D. Exposure D is near the ocean within 600 feet or 20 times the building height because it is directly exposed to the high wind, whereas exposure C is partially exposed for every other area The mean roof height is determined by taking the average of the peak height at the ridge and the eave height, both measured from the ground, in feet. Take those two values together and add them and divide it by two. Let's look at how to use RAS 127. Start by selecting the appropriate table. First, is it a gable or a hip roof? Then is it exposure C or D? And then what roof slope range does it fall into to determine which table? Remember there are 12 tables, so it's important to know which one. Once you've found the correct table, then determine which row of the table to use based on the mean roof height to find the roof pressures for each of the zones. Next, you need to find the notice of approval for the tile product you're using to get the aerodynamic multiplier, which is represented by the symbol lambda and measured in cubic feet. And there are typically two different measurements, one for a batten application and one for a direct deck application. You'll also need the restoring moments due to gravity, depending on the roof slope. Now you can determine the moment of resistance for each zone by multiplying the pressure from the tables 
by the aerodynamic multiplier from the tile notice of approval or NOA and then subtracting the moment due to gravity found in the NOA. Finally, you'll select fastening options from the tile NOA with attachment resistance values that are equal to or greater than the moments of resistance for each zone. A single fastening method can be used for the entire roof where using one fastening method will meet or exceed all of the pressure zones, or you can use two fastening methods or multiple fastening methods depending on the zones. If you use a multiple fastening method, you'll need to calculate the size of those zones measured by the value A, or which is equal to 10% of the least horizontal dimension or 0.4 times the height, whichever is smaller, but not less than either 4% of the least horizontal dimension or building width or three feet. And we'll work through some examples. So let's see how to make these calculations with several examples. For the first example, we'll pick this house in Miami. It's a hip style roof. It's in exposure C because it's not within 600 feet of the ocean. Let's assume it has a 412 roof slope, an eave height of 12 feet and ridge height of 19 feet. Adding those two values together and dividing by two gives us a mean roof height of 15 and a half feet. Let's also assume it has an Eagle Capistrano high profile tile. So its NOA number is 18-0829.04 on Miami-Dade's website. And let's also assume it has a direct deck installation. To calculate the building width and length, we need to draw a rectangle around the entire perimeter of the building and estimating for the sake of this example, a uh, building length of 50 feet and building width of 48 feet. Using RAS 127, we find for a hip style roof in exposure C with a 412 roof slope, we would use table seven. Then looking at a mean roof height of 15 and a half feet, we find values on the table for the pressures of zone one of 71, zone 2R is 93, zones 2E and 3 of 100. From the tile NOA, we find an aerodynamic multiplier for direct deck application of 0 0.277 and restoring moment due to gravity at a 412 roof slope for direct deck application equals 6.88. Now we determine the moments of resistance for each zone. Remember to use positive numbers for the pressures. So for zone one, we calculate 12.8, zone 2E, 18.9, and for zones 2R and 3, we get a value of 20.8. Going back to the NOA, we look for attachment methods that have attachment resistance values that meet or exceed the highest value we calculated of 20.8 foot-pounds force. This gives us plenty of options with this particular example of mechanical fastening options of two 10D ring chain nails or two number eight screws per tile or one or two nails with an eave clip. And we have all the adhesive fastening options available to us as well. For our second example, let's use the same as example one but instead of a hip style roof, let's assume it's a gable style roof and see how that changes the values. Because we have a gable style roof instead of a hip style, we would use a different table. In this case, we'd use table one. And we'd see that the values for the zones are different and we have different types of zones because of a different style roof. Assuming we're using the same tile, it would have the same values from the NOA. Again, calculating the moments of resistance for each zone. Now we find we have values of 14.7 for zones one and two E, 24.7 for zones two N, two R and three E, and 30.8 for zone three R. Comparing attachment resistance values from the NOA for various fastening methods, 
Now we find we have less options because our value is higher at 30.8 foot-pounds force. So that limits us to using either two number eight screws per tile or two tendy nails with an eave clip. We still have all of our adhesive fastening options available to us. Let's look at if we wanted to use two fastening methods for this example using screws. I could use one screw per tile in the areas highlighted in blue because it has a attachment resistance value of 20.7 and the maximum value of those two zones is 14.7. However, in the zones that are highlighted in orange, zones 2R, 2N, 3E, and 3R, two screws would meet those areas at an ret attachment resistance value of 43.2, which exceeds both the 24.7 and 30.8 foot-pounds force value value for zone 3R. Another way to look at it is if we wanted to use a different fastening method of nails and foam. Now when we use two 10D ring shank nails, which have an attachment resistance value of 28.6 foot-pounds, we could use those in zones 1, 2E, 2R, 2N, and 3E. We could use them everywhere except for zone 3R, which has a value of 30.8. So in that case, we need to use a different fastening method. And in this case, let's say for the sake of the example, we use a foam. And in this case, ICP AH160 medium 24 gram patty. So then I could use two ring shank nails on the entire roof, except for these corners, 3R at the uh, gable end at the ridge and use foam. When using more than one fastening method for the roof, you need to calculate the size of the zones. Dimension A, which is calculated as 10% of the least horizontal dimension, or 0.4 times the height, whichever is smaller. So let's calculate those. 0.1 times the least horizontal dimension is the building width, which we determined to be 48 feet. So 0.1 times 48 feet is 4.8 feet. 0.4 times the height, or mean roof height, H, we determined as 15.5 feet. Multiplying that by 0.4 gives us 6.2 feet. So 4.8 feet is the smaller dimension. But we also need to make sure that it's not less than either 4% of the least horizontal dimension or building width, or 3 feet. So let's calculate 4% or 0 0.04 times the building width of 48 feet is equal to 1.9 feet. So the 4.8 feet we calculated earlier is not less than that, and it's not less than three feet. So our dimension A for the size of the zones is 4.8 feet. So we measure in from the edges of the roof, 4.8 feet, and mark those off on a roof to know where to use those different fastening methods. Now let's look at a third example using the same roof, but instead we'll use a different tile. We'll use Barcelona 900 from Borel, which has a different NOA number of 19-1021.11. But all the other roof dimensions are the same as an example too. We use the same table number one in RAS 127 as we did in example two. Using a different tile NOA, we have different numbers of 0.301 for the aerodynamic multiplier with direct deck application and a value of 6.9 for the restoring moment due to gravity at a 412 slope with direct deck installation. Making the calculations with these new values for the new tile, we get a value of 16.6 for zones 1 and 2E, 27.4 for zones 2N, 2R, and 3E, and 34.0 for zone 3R. Now using the highest value we calculated of 34.0 foot-pounds force, we can compare the attachment resistance values for several different mechanical fastening options. And we find that there are two mechanical fastening options available to us, two number eight screws per tile, 
or two 10D nails plus an eave clip. We also have several options available of adhesive fastening options. If we wanted to use two fastening methods for the roof, we find that two 10D ring shank nails with an attachment resistance value of 27.8 foot-pounds force works for all zones except for zone 3R in the ridge corner, which has a requirement of 34.0 foot-pounds force. So in that case, we would need to use a different fastening method. We could use two number eight screws per tile or use some of the adhesive fastening options that meet or exceed that value. When using more than one fastening method, then again, we need to calculate the size of the zones measured by dimension A. And since this is the same building with a building width of 48 feet and mean roof height of 15 and a half feet, we get the same value of 4.8 feet for that dimension A. For the fourth example, we'll take a new building. It's also in Miami and it's in exposure D because it's near the ocean. We'll also assume it has a 412 roof slope, an eave height of 20 feet, a peak height of 28 feet, which gives us a mean roof height by adding those two values together and dividing by two of 24 feet. We'll also assume it uses Barcelona 900 from Borel and is a direct deck installation. To calculate the building dimensions of width and length, we need to take a rectangle around the entire building. And then by estimating the values on this map, we'll just assume it's a length of 100 feet and a width of 60 feet. Then we find for a hip roof in exposure D with 412 roof slope, we would use table 10 from RAS 127. Looking for a mean roof height of 24 feet on the table, we find values of 89 for zone 1, 116 for zone 2R, and 124 for zones 2E and 3. Next, we find the aerodynamic multiplier and restoring moments due to gravity in the NOA. And we find the same values as we had before for a 412 roof slope uh, for direct deck installation of restoring moment of gravity of 6.9 and the aerodynamic multiplier for direct deck application of 0 0.301. We now use those pressures we determined from the table in RAS 127 and the values we retrieved from the NOA to make the calculations for the moment of resistance for each zone. We find that we have 19.9 for zone one, 30.4 for zone 2E, 28 for zone 2R, and 30.4 for zone three. With the pressures we found from the table in RAS-127 and the values we retrieved from the NOA for the tile, now we can find mechanical fastening options with attachment resistance values that exceed or meet the values, the highest value we calculated of 30.4 foot-pounds force. That leaves us a couple of options, either two number eight screws per tile or two 10D nails with an eave clip. We also have several options available for using a tile adhesive. If instead we wanted to use two fastening methods per roof, we could use one screw per tile in a lower pressure zone number one, but would need to use two screws per tile in higher pressure zones 2R, 2E, and 3. Using more than one fastening method on a roof requires us to calculate the size of the zones measured by dimension A. So first we need to calculate 10% of the least horizontal dimension or building width, so 0 0.1 times 60 feet gives us six feet, or 0 0.4 times the mean roof height of 24 feet, which equals 9.6 feet, and we take the smaller of those two values, which is six feet. But it can't be less than either 4% of the least horizontal dimension or building width, or three feet. 0 0.04 times 60 feet gives us 2.4 feet, so our value is six feet. So then we use that dimension and measure in from the edges of the roof to determine the size of the zones at the corner 
at the eave and along the hips and the ridge. If you have any questions, you can contact the TRI at tileroofing.org, or you can contact one of the tile manufacturers for the tile you're using by doing a simple web search for their name and finding their contact information. My name is Wade Shepard. I'm the Senior Manager for Roof Components and Technical Services for Boral Roofing. Thank you and have a great day.